Meanwhile, the Makati Business Club Chairman Ed Chua supports the government's move to end endo or contractualization. But he says our labor laws also need to be overhauled. Here's the second part of his interview with Beverly Natividad. This move of the Department of Labor is, 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 uh, is uh, positive to ensure that there is protection for, for workers. I think what's important, however, is that the Department of Labor must come up with policies that are attuned to the times. There are elements in our labor laws which are very restrictive in terms of protecting labor. Again, we are all for protecting labor. But sometimes in the process, you make it so difficult that even if a person is not performing well, it's so hard to actually replace that person. When you think about it, there are so many people who don't have a job. And if there, I'm sure there are many good people who would be very happy to have that job. Uh, but then you cannot make it available because it's so hard to remove someone who's not performing. That's where we're saying that the Department of Labor uh, I think needs to ensure that our, our labor laws are uh, making us competitive uh, without sacrificing the protection of uh, workers. Like for example, the labor unions are proposing to just to hire them directly and remove the middlemen. Uh, do you think that will work? You see, it's a different world right now. Um, in the old days, companies would uh, hire security guards, the laborers. They're all employees of the company. But times have changed, and it's not because companies don't want them in their uh, organization. It's just that there are organizations who have the specialty to be running this type of business. And also, it ensures that they will have a career within their profession. I mean, it's very difficult for someone who likes to be in the security uh, you know, career to say that, hey, uh, how can I grow in a company But because I'm just in security, you know? But if you're working for a security company, you can be a manager, you can be you know, a boss of that company because that's the area of specialization. You outsource different parts of your activity to spe uh, specialists. And by doing so, you, you also achieve uh, economies of scale, you have efficiency. Uh, so there are so many benefits of doing that. The president has also spoken about um, opening sectors like telcos mm -hmm. and oil companies mm -hmm. um, because he said he wanted to open it to more competition. Yeah. Um, do you think for an emerging economy, a growing economy like the Philippines, something like that would be high time? First of all, the market is deregulated. No? Like in the oil industry, there are over 80 players in the industry. So for people to say it's not open, it's not right. The same is true with telco. I mean, no one is saying you cannot come in. I think what we need to address are the barriers to the entry of investors in the country. And these barriers are where I believe um, the president has uh, uh, clearly identified a number of them. One, of course, is infrastructure. The bureaucracy, how much red tape is there? Now, the president has also focused on this. He said, you know, three days. But the challenge uh, there is how that permeates, you know, going down. Because the president can say one thing, but this, the country is huge, you know. So everyone must be, must be able to execute that. So the execution is key. The third element is actually uh, corruption. Uh, and this also, the president is very firm. It is unfair to expect that government alone will be able to solve corruption, bureaucracy. Everyone must do their part and make our uh, members known, know, the business community, that uh, that's something that is not acceptable. There are many other elements that needs to be in place so that we can attract more investment. One, of course, is policies. There must be predictability in our policies. We cannot be changing policies every so often. This drive towards, for example, opening up our market to foreign market, foreign players, do you think that would be good since uh, there are moves also to look into the, for example, the, the negative list? Yes, definitely. That one, it's a good thing you mentioned that because we are also very much for uh, amending uh, a, a number of the economic provisions in the Constitution. We need to ensure that that negative list is significantly reduced. The issue of land ownership is very emotional in a country where there are a lot of uh, people who don't have their own homes. We can just open up industrial, so it's for industries. People can buy that. Companies cannot bring land anywhere, cannot take it out of the country. But um, um, even if we say, no, we should not uh, allow foreigners to, to own land, I don't think that's a big disincentive for uh, foreigners to come. I mean, many countries in the region also do not allow uh, foreigners to own land. So it's not just the Philippines. 